What's up everybody, Saint Riot here, and I get asked a lot when I'm streaming. Oh, Saint, you stream? Yeah, I stream invasions and stuff over at twitch.tv slash Saint Riot. Uh, I get asked a lot when I'm streaming and I do invasions. Um, typically, after I win an invasion, <laughs> uh, people are often like, Bro, where do you find, how do you find all of these invasions? Uh, and every invasion I have is against so-and-so, uh, the bad person. And I would argue that we probably have the same invasions. Um, the difference being, like, uh, how you see an invasion. For example, this phantom is using, uh, that mask that does bleed stuff and rivers of blood. And that's pretty brutal, right? But when you see a player holding their shield up like that, like, if this was any other game, what would you think about a player who who held their shield up at all times, regardless of if anything was happening or not? You would probably be like, ah, I don't think this player is very good. They know what good stuff is, but um, I think they don't actually know how to play. So, this player goes from being... If, if you don't have the perspective to put that in place... Th that player is, like, just as terrifying as, you know, a good player who's wearing that stuff and using that weapon. You understand what I'm saying? But he holds his shield up all the time. Just little things like that. And another thing is, like, let's say you just invaded a guy wearing this mask and using Rivers of Blood, and they knew how to play. You're just going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt that he knows how to play the game because he's wearing the same clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong, He's he, he knows enough to equip the good weapon and to equip the good mask. But, uh, but that's about where the extent of his knowledge is. And that's okay, that's fine. But if, if you approach everyone who's wearing like some try-hard stuff, like they're a tournament winner, you're, you're probably overestimating them by a lot. Which means now you're in your own head, and you're playing not against that player. You're playing against that idea that you have of the player, even though they're not that good. So, when you see someone, and they're, like, doing something that you know is, like, not good, like holding their shield up all the time, you can use that to, to sort of gauge what skill level the person you're, you're playing is at. Are they a player who's like actually good and using all this busted stuff? Or are they just a player who's using all this busted stuff and isn't very good? And if you're, if you're already giving that player the benefit of the doubt and you're playing them like they're really good, like I said, let's pretend like you just invaded people and they were wearing that same, you know, setup and using that same weapon. If you give the bad player the benefit of the doubt, then you've just had two invasions probably turn out the same way, right? And you're and you're and you're you're like, well, what could I have done? And now you've had two bad invasions in a row. So you go and you turn on Twitch and you see the streamer and the streamer's not having that experience. And you say, where are you? From? It's it's the same people. <laughs> I'm invading the same people you are. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, hey, are, are you? Are you playing the people that you're that you're actually playing, or are you playing the idea of the people that you're you're seeing? Anyway, it's Honest Rivers. He's back, Old Whistle, Old Whistle Fang. He's back. I learned that the name I chose, Boisudu, is uh, is actually like how it's actually the Japanese pronunciation of the English word. I didn't know that. One of my viewers uh, is 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 either is Japanese or speaks Japanese like fluently. I think they live in Japan, but I don't know that that makes them Japanese. The point is, I learned something about. I saw there were like two words for whistle, and like one was a noun and one was a verb. And I forgot which one I went with, but I agonized over that decision for like three or four minutes, and then I just picked one. Uh, but yeah, I've uh, leveled up whistle just a little bit. We're still using double slash on uh, on the washing pole. It's not it's not the washing pole, Saint. It's the Nagakiba. Alright. 
We're still using double slash on the Nagakiba. Uh, a little later on, I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't get any good clips of this, I don't think. A little later on, I went and got uh, the Blood Flame spell, where you like slash the air and it makes a little explosion. And um, I was doing some really fun stuff with that, but I don't think I got any cool clips of it for some reason. I guess I'm forgetful. But uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with this with this build. The katanas are really, really good. And the reason I chose this katana was someone told me that it was like the closest thing to like the Lothric Knight Sword or uh, the Baldur Side Sword in Elden Ring, in that it was uh, long and had all thrust attacks as heavy attacks. So one-handed and two-handed, both are uh, thrust attacks for both heavy attacks. So if you press like R2, it's a thrust attack, and if you press it again, it's a follow-up thrust attack. And uh, that's that's the thing. I love that. I love that. Um, in in all the games, that's always like my favorite sword: the the Balder side sword, the Fume Knight sword, the Lothric Knight sword. So, yeah, now it's just in Katana version. So I was like, yeah, we'll check that out. Honestly, I wish the weapon was a little shorter. <laughs> just just for the aesthetics of it. Like, it's just so long. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it lends itself to a good, edgy, uh, you know, Sephiroth type. <laughs> which is cool. We're using the Wakazashi in, in the offhand. I've given it uh, the parry, Ash of War. Which is, um, it doesn't have a lot of parry frames. It's not a very good parry. But, in all honesty, I just, like, if... I feel like there's no difference in parry frames in PvP. Like, you just press parry when the other guy presses attack. You know? It's hard... It's hard to parry, um, you know, regular enemies, bosses, like, things like that. It's tough to get a parry with this. But in PvP, like, I, I honestly, like, see no difference between this and anything else but um, it does have less parry frames if you're a person who experiences parry frames and like you know what I mean like you actually you notice them <laughs> you notice when something has less parry frames then this is not a good parry tool that's all I'm getting at but um, yeah I've had a bunch of fun invasions uh, with this with this character again I'm not finished with the character I'm just playing through the game and as I play through the game, I, I run and I get the stuff that I know I'm going to use for the build. And then I just invade as I go through the game. And uh, I love it. It's a lot of fun. Talismans, at this point, I had... Uh, oh, the sword insignia. So that as long as I kept attacking, I would do more damage. Uh, which works well with Double Slash. And it also works well with, like, the L1s if you Power Stance. You'll notice I'm Power Stance, but, like, I rarely use it. I use it occasionally, but not all the time. If you don't, like, one... I I'm just not huge into the, the moveset. But two, if you don't use it all the time, when you actually do, like, bust it out, uh, you know, you'll, you'll catch people off guard with it. As opposed to just throwing out L1s all the time. To be fair, I think you can just throw out L1s all the time. The, the dual curve sword move set, the dual straight sword move set are both insanely powerful. Uh, they do a ton of damage and they're super fast, so like, why not just throw them out all the time? But, um, as always, uh, I'm, I'm not just playing against my opponents, I'm also playing against my own um, concept of like what is and what is not cool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the sword insignia, we're wearing that. We've also got the false mirror thing on, so that we can look cool in our invasions. Um, then we've got Earth Tree Favor plus one, I think, at this point. We had the Earth Tree. Maybe we didn't have plus one yet, but we will have Earth Tree Favor plus one. We just don't have it right now, I don't think. Uh, and then I think we're using the Prosthesis Wearer's Talisman, which gives us plus five dex. And now, eventually, it, towards the end of this video, I'll have moved away from that, and I'm, I've got Millicent's Prosthesis, which uh, gives me plus 5 dex and increases attacks for as long as attacks continue. So I get both for one talisman slot. 
and um, I'm still kind of messing around with that, what to do with the other talisman slot. Uh, obviously, still wearing the prosthesis wear, uh, the prosthesis, yeah, the prosthesis wearer's talisman would still be fine, because that would give me an extra five decks, and more decks is more damage, and that's good. Uh, or you could stack it with the sword insignia um, and do even more damage as long as attacking persists. Uh, or you could, you know, say, "Hey, I want some more stamina," or "I want some more," um, "I want some more hit points," and you could put something else like that on there. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to go with, but I'm going to go with something. So, Blood Flame Talon—that's the name of the spell I got. I wanted this character to be sort of um, like an occultish samurai. Sort of like uh, Genichiro meets Shishiman warrior type, and so I'm I'm, I've, I've, I'm looking for like occulty type spells and stuff. And Blood Flame Talon is like it's just it's the type of spell I love. It's basically like combustion or black flame, um, except much slower. Uh, and I guess it builds up bleed. I don't know. But essentially how I'm using it is basically just as, like, if, if two people are chasing me, I can, I can use it, and then when it goes off, I can turn around and use uh, Double Slash, uh, which is really, really fun. And you can even, like, true combo Double Slash out of Blood Flame Talon if it hits. I'm using it like that. And it doesn't have to be for turn and burns. You, you can also, like, if, you, if someone rolls towards you, you use Blood Flame Talon. And then if they roll again because they're freaked out, but they're still rolling towards you, Blood Flame Talon's going to pop off. Double Slash. It's fun. Um, I need to find more spells and stuff to use. Uh, I think I'm going to lean towards maybe trying out some of those those weird tools. They're like arcane tools. Um, like the Omen Baron and things like this. Uh, but yeah. Build's not finished yet. Still has a way to go, but I'm, I'm going to make a video, actually, going over why I do this. <laughs> Invade as I'm, like, playing through the game, because it is so much fun, and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it helps me make builds, and these invasions are cool, and you get a bunch of cool clips, and that's awesome, uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good reasons to, um, to, like, as you're making it a character, as you're making a new build, invade with it. And, uh, you know, see what he gets into. It's fun. I think that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the clips and the commentary and the YouTube uh, content here for you. Uh... That's pretty much it, right? I've gone over the stats, or I've shown the stats on the screen. I haven't gone over them, but that should be fairly simple. Uh, I've gone over the talismans. I think my weapon is at plus 12 for most of these invasions. I think. Don't hold me to that, but I think that's right. And the other thing that I said at the beginning of the video, uh, something to keep in mind. Um, whether or not you're playing against a character, or I'm sorry, whether or not you're playing against a person who's like wearing good stuff and is good, or just a person who's wearing and using good stuff, you know, um, make sure you're not, make sure you're not overthinking your opponent, make sure you're not playing, uh, you know, four-dimensional chess on the astral plane, and your opponent is just playing like the coloring book, you know, because that happens, that happens a lot, that was a thing that that I had to get out of my own head uh, during Dark Souls 3 Invasion. When I'd see somebody using, like, the meta weapon of the week, you know. Just because somebody's using that doesn't mean they know what the hell is happening outside of that particular thing is good. They know that. And that's, you know, honestly, sometimes that's enough. But um, a lot of the times, as, well, as long as you're aware that that's all that's happening, uh, you can you can turn that around. So I think after this, like I said, this build isn't finished, so I'll probably do a little bit more with this build. And then after that, I'm going to start another build. And when I start that build, I'm also going to start a different type of uh, project uh, for YouTube here. Um, some new videos. Uh, different types of videos uh, that hopefully will be good and enjoyable. And I will see you 
when uh, those are ready. Oh, I didn't mean to use that, but obviously. <laughs> that was just a dumb mistake on my part. Make sure you're not accidentally using your phantom finger when you're trying to use your Estus. <laughs> That's another tip. You can have that one for free. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Until then, later y'all.